Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. I know, another one. It's been a whole week since the last one. It's amazing. So, um, I'm using, in fact, I think I was using this new microphone uh, in the last one as well. But I've got a new microphone, which is hopefully um, improved the quality of the sound. Um, There's also some other things that I will be doing in the future editing wise that should improve the sound even more but that won't be uh, you know maybe for a week or two possibly maybe even a couple of days away but uh, so next week's recording may sound even better Uh, so thank you for listening thank you for your support If you would like to help to support the running costs of this free service, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. The link on my website, jasonnewland.com. I hope you're all well. And that's it. Let's get on with the recording. Oh, yeah. So... As ever, this is going to be pretty much like a uh, broken into two kind of recording. Uh, It's available for both people that are looking to relax and also those that are here for, you know, wanting to sleep. There's... So I get, you know, I change my uh, percentages around, but, you know, 95%, maybe even 99% of falling asleep is relaxing. So this is both a relaxation and a sleep session. So those listening for sleep, my suggestion would be to lay down in your bed, get yourself comfortable. Uh, You don't want to say that, I mean physically comfortable. Because you may not be listening to this to go to sleep for eight hours. You may just be using it during the day, you may have your full, you know, your full clothes on, and that could be a little bit restrictive, especially if you've got maybe tight trousers or a tight top on. Or so, my suggestion, or a tight T-shirt, something like that, that's fine if you're out and about, but maybe when you, you know, wanting to relax. Perhaps it's a little bit physically restrictive. For example, I'm so muscular uh, that, you know, I look, I mean, I look phenomenal in a t-shirt. Obviously, I've got the body of a, of like the Hulk, honestly, just it's amazing. I surprised myself. So I wear a little t-shirt even in the winter to show off all the muscles. But when I get home, I really, just, it's a little bit, oh, I'm like, oh, t-shirt, must smash. I just like, I have to get it off. So I rip it off, obviously, because I don't, I'm so strong. It's hard to just remove clothes normally. Um, and it's just part of being so muscular, I have to just rip it off like, uh, like a stripper. Uh, so I... It's really important, I think, to feel relaxed physically, if you can. 
sometimes it can be as simple as just taking your socks off. <laughs> you know, uh, it can feel nice to. It's one of my little favourite things. Is in the summer, not so much the winter because it's cold, but it's to take my socks off and just feel the air on my feet. There's an initial reaction, you know, the chemicals of the smell of my feet in the air, a bit of crackling, a bit of a, it's a bit volatile for a while, yeah, weird, weird smells, but generally, it feels nice, it feels nice just to have that coolness on my toes. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is... I've got a lot of muscles. I'm very, very physical. No, what I'm trying to say is that feeling relaxed isn't always down to closing your eyes and meditating or doing a progressive relaxation. Sometimes it can be something that we do practically to help ourselves like having a bath a slow bath a hot a hot or warm bath with scented oils or you know that kind of stuff if that's what you're into Or it could be a nice slow walk in fields or walking your dog or your ferret if you've got a ferret. I imagine most people do have ferrets, but I'm just guessing I have one, so I just assume everybody else does. And other things, sometimes just lying down on the floor maybe in the garden just looking at the sky watching the clouds go by it's a lot more relaxing in the summer admittedly you know as opposed to like during a hurricane or you know when it's really cold I wouldn't suggest doing it but on a lovely, lovely, bright, warm day. It doesn't have to be like really hot. Just, you know, nice enough where you can lay down without getting covered in mud, you know. Just watching the clouds go by. It's very relaxing. Sometimes just remembering doing those things can be relaxing. I'll give you an example. I'll give you two, in fact. There is, and I don't, actually three, three. And I don't know why I remember these three particular occasions, but... I guess at least two of them I really needed to relax. Like proper, it was imperative that I let go. Uh, one was, I was visiting a friend in Nottingham and it's not really relevant to the, to the story, but... I was sitting outside on his coal bunker because uh, still used coal, I think, at that time because it was in the 1970s. No, it wasn't. Uh, and I was just, I closed my eyes and it was a really nice day. There was a cool breeze and I felt amazing 
I felt so, so calm and my body and my mind just melted. Completely. And that was a really, really... Well, it was profound enough for me to still remember it 20 years later. So there was something there. It was like, wow. Like, oh, this is... I really didn't want to move. I know, you know, practically I'd have to move eventually to eat, go to the toilet, because, you know, it stopped being relaxing, wouldn't it? You know, after I sort of soiled myself and stuff. So I, it was was so nice. I just wanted to stay there. There's, There's a point of comfort that really, really felt lovely. And it took no effort at all to get there. It's as if my body and my mind just did it because that's what was needed. My body produced that relaxation. Because my body needed that relaxation. So I'm thinking, you know, based on that, that there's an instinct that you have an instinct uh, you know inside you where your body knows when relaxation is required and I, I sometimes I think that we're a little bit like A little bit like humans, really, because we are, aren't we? A little bit like humans with uh, compared to animals. Like even my little ferret, he knows it's spring. He knows, even though the temperature is really fluctuating. It was proper, proper, proper cold a couple of nights ago. But he knows it's spring and he's ready for it and he's got energy. And instead of almost dragging him along the ground for a walk, he's running ahead of me. Okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> but he's he wants to walk, he wants to explore and he's got this fresh zeal for life. And the trees know, and the daffodils know, and the birds know. And because I suppose humans were living in houses and everything's almost, you know, central heating, which I'm very happy about, we're not as in touch with the seasons as an animal would be. And maybe... Because that would, I would say that would be an instinctual thing. We are in touch, but maybe not as much as we would have been when we were living in huts or living in, you know, caves and stuff in the seventies. So when it comes to relaxation. I think it's important 
to listen. Listen to our body. What does your body need? In the same way as... You know when you're hungry. You know when you need to go to the toilet. You know when you need to have a drink of water. Your body tells you these things. And it's very... Subtle as well. It's a very subtle feeling that you're used to because you've had it your whole life. But other, other, other senses and uh, whether you want to call them warnings or alerts or just, you know, notifications. It's really a good word in this day of apps. Is your body does tell you, lets you know when it's time to take a break. Sit down and close your eyes. Maybe lay down and fall asleep. Go to sleep for a bit. Drift off. Your body tells you what it needs. And the amazing thing about the body is it will take what it needs. Regardless of what you do. It will take it if it needs it. So no matter what you do. And this is for any insomniacs out there who insist that they never sleep. And it's a horrible thing to go through. But everybody sleeps. We may not sleep uh, how we perhaps would like to in the same way, you know, for eight hours every day. Constantly, although you can have more of that sleeping for longer. Sleeping deeper and being able to tune in to what you need tune in to your own requirements Because there could be a difference between lying down and falling asleep really easily. Simply because you've made the change of deciding to notice how relaxed you feel. You decided to notice that actually when you lie down on your bed you automatically feel calm. Your body automatically relaxes and your mind automatically slows down. And when you realize that this is happening and you start to notice or give it a little bit of energy, a little bit of focusing, a little bit of acknowledging that this is occurring, that you are naturally starting to relax and the uh, Muscles in your body start to relax. Letting go of any pent up stress in your muscles or your bones. That 
that stuff, just like energy, just starts to just release itself. Because it's not needed. It's not required. It's not needed any longer. Maybe it wasn't needed before. And as you lie in there, you start to maybe notice that you you feel more relaxed, and you maybe you notice that the stress is leaving your body. Now, the parts of your body you're probably going to notice it more is the parts that you feel it more in. For me, it would be probably back of the neck, perhaps shoulders, eyes, forehead. That's just for me, personally. For you, it might be your belly button or your left knee. It could be anywhere in your body um, where you feel the tension leaving. Probably the place that I'd like to feel it most would be in my lower back on the left side. Which is what I'm focusing on now. Sorry to be giving myself attention when I'm supposed to be focusing on you. But I might as well uh, focus on Well, if I was taking you out for a meal... I'd want to eat as well, wouldn't I? I'm not just going to sit there and watch you eat. I'm going to eat, so I'm also going to relax. I always do it with you. You know, I'm not sitting here ironing my uh, rock star costume and... Or doing, you know, practicing my dance moves in case I ever get uh, invited onto Strictly. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm relaxed. I tried lying down, making relaxation and sleep recordings, lying down on my bed. And I've given up on that because I always, always fall asleep. I always fall asleep. There's no way around it. Because it's almost... That's the natural process. There's nothing uh, weird really going on apart from inside my brain. There's nothing weird about it. It's natural. Falling asleep is as natural as farting. It's just a natural thing that we all do. And it's going to happen. Anyway. And isn't it better that it happens when you you know when you want to be able to enjoy it? I'll give you an example of a time when it happened when I didn't want it to happen. And don't worry, I wasn't skydiving or anything and <laughs> fell asleep, so I forgot to pull the cord. And I guess that's obvious because I'm sitting here talking to you, isn't it? But when I was at university 10 years ago, I finished the course. I actually handed in the dissertation on the last day of 
university. It was the last opportunity to hand it in. Uh, basically, and I, I probably didn't really get much sleep for a few days, both because of, well, just the whole process. Anyway, I handed it in. We were all celebrating, everyone in the class was celebrating that it was the last day, the last class, and it was more of just like, bye bye, everybody, bye bye. Take care. Bye-bye. And we all ended up going to Nando's. And I sat there. And the plan was, we were just having lunch, and then we were going to go to the pub and spend the rest of the day in the pub, basically celebrating. I like, 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 like a party. A parte. Well, as I was eating, as I was, I could feel my body starting to relax. And so, you know, I'm eating the food, it's lovely feeling so tired and I don't know what's going on because previous to that I, would, I was feeling wired and for three days solid I was pretty much like you know buzzing through trying to finish this very very boring dissertation knowing that if I didn't hand it in on the day, then I would have pretty much failed the final year. You know, I'd have got a third, probably. No, not th uh, no. In fact, no, I possibly would have failed the entire thing if I hadn't handed that in. Or I'd have got, if there's a f so, such thing as a fourth, I don't know. But to not hand a dissertation in, that's what the whole third year was about. Anyway, I'm finding myself feeling so tired and I can't figure it out. You know, bearing in mind I make been making relaxation and sleep recordings since uh you know, the Roman era is it's amazing. It's like what's going on? And I said, at the, you know, I had my last bit of food and I said, look, I have to go home. And uh, I need to lie down for an hour and then I'll, then I'll come back and I'll meet you. I'll meet you wherever you are. That was my intention. I went home. So... This is probably one o'clock in the afternoon. Got home. Woke up about seven in the evening. I wasn't in the garden or anything. I did actually get home and I lay down on the bed. But I was that was it. I had no intention I really of sleeping. Just of sort of try trying to in fact I'm not even sure if I was gonna go to sleep. I might have just thought I'd just have a have a shower, try and wake myself up. And that was it. <sighs> Fell straight asleep. Because that's what my body and my mind, I'm sure, required. So it almost forced that sleep on me I didn't have a choice and I just you know it was almost instant I lay down bang I was asleep So 
So my body took over because that's what was needed. Now, I could easily have laid there in a different scenario. And I've done this in the past. I had a sleep apnea test. I had a machine attached to me. I swore that I hadn't slept at all, all night. When in fact I'd slept for about over five hours so the thing about lying down in the dark laying on your bed is it's kind of hard to keep track of time Time almost distorts. And we know that, don't we? We're sleeping. You know, we fall asleep maybe at 11 o'clock in the evening, wake up at 7.30 in the morning, as an example. Where's that time gone? That's a long time. If we was awake... That's a considerable amount of time. Eight and a half hours. But when we're asleep, it just goes by almost in an instant. So your body will take the sleep when it needs more of that deep relaxation and sometimes I get a sense that I get a sense that all your body needs is an opportunity to just let go and relax the opportunity to be able to fall asleep in just a really comfortable way without any fuss without any preparation or any kind of expectations just to be able to lie down on your bed to enjoy the feelings of relaxation because it's pleasurable it's actually a pleasurable experience it feels nice it feels m really nice and part of the reason it feels nice is so that you'll want to do it again. It's almost it's your brain sending those chemicals, those good feel chemicals to you. Trying to encourage you to maybe spend a bit more time relaxing. Because it's not, it's not only healthy for you, but it feels nice really feels pleasurable plus you gain the benefit afterwards of having a, a calmer mind during the day able to deal with much more of pretty much anything that life presents to you And then you can realize that sleeping 
is also pleasurable. And that when you're lying there on your bed, relaxing deeper and deeper, that difference between being relaxed and being asleep almost disappears to the point where there there really isn't any difference where it feels the same and now as we count down from 10 all the way down to 1 you can enjoy feeling even more relaxed and sleepy, even more comfortable as you drift, as you drift. Now, Two. Mm-hmm.